Welcome back. We are continuing chapter 23, cardiovascular system, specifically the notes on circulatory pathways. We've already gone over pulmonary, coronary, digestive, hepatic circulation. Right now we're going over circulation to the brain. So we're gonna start on slide 13. Um, yeah, slide 13 of these uh, notes. Pathways to the brain, as you can see, are pretty complex. And the reason for this is we want to deliver lots of blood to the brain. The brain is super important. You never want blood to not go to the brain. That's when you faint or worse, something like a stroke might happen and death. Um, <clears throat> so let's break this down. I'm willing to use this schematic over here on the white right side. <clears throat> Circulation to the brain is, is part of the systemic pathway. So we're gonna start here in the left ventricle. From the left ventricle, up the aorta. And once we're here in the aortic arch, we can go one of four ways. I'm gonna pick one right now. Let's go to the right side. So we're gonna to go to the right. And the first artery we have here in this aortic arch is the brachiocephalic trunk. Trunk, remember, means short, wide, branching blood vessel. It happens to be an artery, and it's called the brachiocephalic trunk. What's interesting is that it's only on the right side for, for this artery. It's not on the left side because the aorta already arches to the left. So there's no need for a brachiocephalic artery on the left. Therefore, you just say brachiocephalic trunk. It happens to be on the right. Brachiocephalic trunk can can go a bit more, uh, more lateral, right subclavian artery. Subclavian means underneath the clavicle, subclavian, so right under the clavicle. And then we go up superior and a bit posterior as well. We're gonna go up to the right vertebral artery. From the right vertebral artery, this vertebral artery actually passes in those uh, transverse foramina of your cervical vertebrae. So we're passing up the cervical vertebrae, those transverse foramina. We go through the foramen magnum, the hole in the base of your skull, and that's when it becomes, it branches or actually converges into a single basilar artery, basilar artery. I'm gonna pause there. At this point, we're almost at the brain. But we're not quite at the brain. That's one potential way to the basilar artery. The other way is to go the, is to go the other direction to the left side. We could go from the aortic arch to the left subclavian. Note how we didn't have a brachiocephalic on this left side because the aortic arch already arches to the left. So aortic arch to the left subclavian, to the left vertebral, to the basilar artery. <clears throat> from the basilar artery, we can go left or right. It doesn't matter. I'm going to go to the, to the left. Left posterior cerebral, left posterior communicating, left anterior cerebral, anterior communicating. At any of these points, we could branch to capillaries, depending on what part of the brain we need to get to. So we could branch to capillaries from any of these arteries, and that's always the case anywhere we are. But note, I could have gone the other way. I could have gone to the right posterior cerebral, right posterior communicating, right anterior cerebral, and then make it to the anterior communicating. We can make a circle. There is a circle of arteries on the base of the brain. This is called the circle of Willis, and these arteries connect. Therefore, it's an anastomosis. The circle of Willis is an anastomosis. It's named after the anatomist who uh, described this. <clears throat> we saw an anastomosis in the heart. The heart is a really important organ, so we want to have redundancies, have collateral circulation, and have as much blood getting to the heart as possible. Same here for the for the brain. We want to have as much uh, as many redundancies as possible, and get as much blood to the brain as possible. <clears throat> Those are two pathways to the brain. Let me clear this. The two pathways involved left and right vertebral arteries. Another way to the brain, left ventricle, ascending aorta, aortic arch, 
rather than going to the breaker cephalic, which is the middle one on the, or sorry, the, the right one on the arch or the left one on the arch, the left subclavian, we'll go to the middle one. It's called the left common carotid. Let me back up actually. Let me describe this aortic arch. The aorta, the aorta makes a fun arch. It goes up, arches, and then goes down. So there's an ascending aorta, aortic arch, and then a descending aorta, thoracic, abdominal, all that. In this aortic arch, there are three blood vessels, brachiocephalic trunk, left common carotid, left subclavian. The way I remember this, the mnemonic that was told to me is you need to remember your ABCs. From the aorta, there's also the brachiocephalic, the common carotid, and the left subclavian, ABCs. So from the aorta, we're gonna go in the middle one, the left common carotid. The left common carotid, uh, take a look over here on the far left side. You can see the common carotid right here. The common carotid has a little bulged portion right here on the neck, right here in the cervical region. That bulged portion, that's called the carotid sinus. So it's just a bulged portion of the common carotid artery. This is an important location. The carotid sinus contains special receptors. Remember baroreceptors, which detect pressure, in this case, blood pressure, as well as chemoreceptors. What chemicals are we sensing? In this case, we're sensing things like carbon dioxide levels. By sensing carbon dioxide levels, by sensing how, what our blood pressure is, we can send that information to our brain through cranial nerve nine, hypoglot or glossopharyngeal nerve, and regulate our blood pressure, regulate our breathing. These are really important receptors to, for detecting how much blood and oxygen is getting to the brain. That's why we want to know blood pressure to the brain. That's why we want to know carbon dioxide levels to the brain. If carbon dioxide levels are high, that's not a good thing. We want oxygen levels to be higher. <clears throat> that's carotid sinus. So the left common carotid, left common carotid artery continues to the left carotid sinus. Left carotid sinus will then branch. We can go either internal or external. External is going to go to the surface of our scalp. Internal carotid is what we're going to focus on. This is going into the brain. From here, the lines get a little confusing here. So I'm going to draw this line here. From the internal carotid artery, we actually meet up right in between that circle of Willis. The left internal carotid artery goes in between the left posterior communicating and left anterior cerebral. We directly send blood into the circle of Willis in between those two arteries. Pretty neat, huh? So it's part of this anastomosis. So this is a pretty complicated anastomosis. We can also see on the right side, aortic arch, brachiocephalic trunk, right common carotid, right carotid sinus, right internal carotid, come in here in between the right posterior communicating and right anterior cerebral, right feeding into this circle of Willis. So four ways to get to the brain, four different important ways to get to the brain. Once we're in the brain, we branch to capillaries. So you see my capillary box up, up here at the top. Capillaries, if you recall, we have a blood brain barrier. We, we can't directly have blood uh, facing brain tissue, facing nervous tissue. So instead, how do we exchange nutrients and, and uh, get rid of waste? Um, well, really most, well, mostly exchanging nutrients. We have that choroid plexus. I know it's a really, really small print here. Choroid plexus found in the ventricles, lateral ventricles, third, fourth ventricles. We have choroid plexus, ependymal cells surrounding these capillaries. The ependymal cells produce cerebrospinal fluid, taking out nutrients and oxygen from those capillaries. Cerebrospinal fluid flows through your ventricles, goes down your central canal, goes to the subarachnoid space. And then from the subarachnoid space, we drain our cerebrospinal fluid through arachnoid villi into the dural venous sinuses. 
Does this all ring a bell? You have several dural venous sinuses. They're, they have specific names. I'm not going to ask you to know them, but there's like one here in the longitudinal fissure. There's some along the side of the transverse fissure. The dural venous sinuses, they all drain eventually to the internal jugular veins. There's a left internal jugular and a right internal jugular. Note, this is a little confusing. While you have carotid arteries going to the brain, you have jugular veins draining away from the brain. It, it, if, don't kill anyone, but if you were to kill someone or something, you don't go for the jugular, you wanna go for the carotid artery. Arteries bleed out faster. Anyways, I, it bothers me when people say to go for the jugular. It doesn't, it's not the efficient way to do it. Anyways, <laughs> um, yeah, don't kill anyone. Um, from the internal jugulars, those drain to brachiocephalic veins. Brachiocephalic veins, while there's only one brachiocephalic artery on the right side, there's actually two brachiocephalic veins, a left and a right. I'll say that again. There's only one brachiocephalic artery, one brachiocephalic trunk on the right side, but there are two brachiocephalic veins, a left and a right. They both drain into the superior vena cava, which drains to the right atrium. This will take a couple of tries to fully remember, um, but that, that's, those are the major pathways to and from the brain. That's our brain circuit. I'm not gonna show every single blood vessel in this pathway. I just wanna show some of the major ones. Take a look at the left picture over here. Uh, lungs have been partially removed. You can see the, can you see the heart right here? <clears throat> um, the aorta is right here. And from the aorta, we can either go up the brachiocephalic trunk, which is only found on the right side, which leads the common carotid, and that'll keep going up the neck. Or we could go to the middle portion. Here's the left common carotid, or we can keep going on the arch to the left subclavian artery. <clears throat> Whoops. And the left subclavian will continue. Um, will continue. What's hidden here is the right subclavian. It's hiding under all this. And the right subclavian, the left subclavian go to the vertebral arteries. In terms of veins, here you have your right internal jugular, you have your left internal jugular. They both drain into uh, subclavian veins. Uh, I'm sorry, not, not subclavian veins, uh, brachiocephalic veins. It's written there already. Here's your left brachiocephalic, here's your right brachiocephalic. And then that gets into the superior vena cava. Back to the right atrium. This picture on the right side, it's looking at the right portion of the neck. You can kind of see the chin right here, right here. Um, a lot of the neck muscles removed. You can see transverse foramina right here. The blood vessel is passing in between through that transverse fore foramen on the right side for the right vertebral artery. <clears throat> I have two views of the circle of Willis here. One, this is a superior view of the skull. The skull's got a transverse cut of the skull. Brain is removed. We're looking down at the base of the cranium. The circle of Willis directly surrounds the cella tersica of the sphenoid. Do you see this? That's the optic chiasm. The optic chiasm is also in that same location. And then the, um, what do you call it? The uh, pituitary would be right here. <clears throat> you can see the basilar artery branching to a posterior cerebral. We'll just stay on the right side for now. Posterior communicating. You can see the internal carotid coming up through the skull. So this is the internal carotid, anterior cerebral, anterior communicating. 
On the underside of the brain, that's over here on the right side, here is a vertebral artery, basilar, both left and right vertebral fused to a single basilar artery. Left posterior cerebral, left posterior communicating, internal carotid, anterior cerebral, anterior communicating. And then finally, let's take a look at complete anatomy. This is the screen just showing uh, um, blood being directed to the brain. You can see our aortic arch right here. The rightmost branch is the brachiocephalic trunk. The brachiocephalic trunk, you can go up the right common carotid. There is a bulge. That bulge is the carotid sinus. We could branch to the left common carotid or, I mean, excuse me, we could branch to the external, but we're gonna to go to the internal carotid. And you can see the internal carotid come up. Oops, let me give you a different view. Superior view. A little bit of an angle. Okay, you can see the internal carotid come up because it leads into the posterior communicating. That's not posterior communicating. Posterior communicating and the anterior cerebral. We could go from the brachiocephalic trunk to the subclavian, right subclavian. And then from the right subclavian, you can come up the vertebral artery, the right vertebral. Sorry, one second. There we go. There's a right vertebral. You can see the right vertebral meets up with the basilar as well as the left vertebral. And then from the basilar, we go to the posterior cerebral on either side. I've also shown here the choroid plexus because that's where the capillaries for producing cerebrospinal fluid are, are found. We have choroid plexus in every single ventricle. And then I've also shown here, this doesn't show the arachnoid, arachnoid villi. I guess you can kind of see where the arachnoid villi would be. But th these are dural venous sinuses, these really large blue blood vessels. So here's one example of a dural venous sinus. These dural venous sinuses drain blood out of the head, out of the head, <laughs> a lot of sinuses. Here's our internal jugular. We're back to an anterior view. Internal jugular goes down. connects with the uh, brachiocephalic vein. There's a, both a right brachiocephalic and a left brachiocephalic. And that meets up with the superior vena cava. <clears throat> That's circulation to the brain. I'm actually going to go back to the slides for one more thing to kind of add on to something that we've already gone over. Here on slide 16. So we've gone over a lot, but adding, a adding on a tiny bit more. Take a look at the left side. Left ventricle, ascending aorta, aortic arch, left common carotid, carotid sinus, internal carotid. We could go up to the main part of the brain, to the circle of Willis, or 
another pathway we can take. We can go to this hypophyseal artery, superior hypophyseal artery. This is the artery leading to the hypothalamus. And here we can see the hypothalamus. From the hypothalamus, we send blood to capillaries. Don't worry about the name called primary plexus. Here's that first set of capillaries. That's where releasing hormone is released into. And then we have a portal vein, hypophyseal portal vein. That's right here. We have a portal system here. There was one set of capillaries. Now we're going to another set of capillaries. This set of capillaries is found in the anterior pituitary. And this is where tropic hormones are released. This is where adrenocorticotropic hormone, thyroid stimulating hormone, luteinizing, follicle stimulating growth, and prolactin are all released. And those hormones are released into hypophyseal veins that go to the rest of the body. So we've mentioned this hypophyseal portal system before, and here it is connected with our pathway um, that we just learned here. So portal system and the hepatic digestive system for digestion and getting rid of toxins. Here we have a portal system so that we can have regulation from the hypothalamus to the anterior pituitary, from the anterior to anterior pituitary to somewhere else in the body. All right. Uh, in the next videos, we'll go over circulation to the arms and legs. So I'll see you in the coming videos. Please let me know if you have questions. Take your time with these. There is a lot, um, and, but I, I just wanna remind you, it's these blood vessels that I'd like you to know. There's a million more blood vessels. We're not gonna go over them. The ones that are listed here are the ones that you should know, all right? I'll talk to you later. Let me know if you have questions.